<laughs> okay, so uh, the title of the talk is uh, Hey You Kids, Get Out of My Yard, uh, or The Graying of Gaming. Uh, obviously, I am well positioned to discuss this. Uh, you know, maybe it's just me, though. I don't know. Although, actually, I look around and I see a lot of people I've been, uh, I've, I've been working with for a long time, so maybe I'm not alone in this. Uh, so I hope there's something relevant for you here. Uh, but before we get started, let me talk about the elephant in the room. Unless you've been hiding under a rock, uh, you probably know that my studio, Junction Point, no longer exists. Um, I am not going to talk about Junction Point. <laughs> I am not going to talk about Disney. If, if you see a little red laser dot on my forehead, uh, no, anyway. Um, I am not going to talk about the last eight years other than to say that uh, uh, I, I worked with an amazing team on some amazing projects. Uh, the folks at Disney were, were pretty remarkable. Uh, I got to visit Disneyland as uh, a contributor to, to the legacy of the company and not just as a spectator. So it's all good, uh, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. Um, I'm here to talk about, uh, well, I'm not even here to talk about this, actually. As, as, I, as I get older, I find that uh, aphorisms become more important to me. I'm not sure why that is, but uh, uh, this one, uh, a lot of people have said, you know, don't worry when one door closes, another opens. And, why we, we love Alexander Graham Bell's comment so much, I don't know, but it's, uh, it's, I appreciate the, the sentiment. But there is another aphorism that actually uh, strikes me as, as more relevant to uh, where I am and, and where I think we are as a, as a business and as a medium, and that's uh, this right here. Uh, Bob Dylan said this in 1965, uh, still true today. Uh, uh, it, it's interesting. Uh, you know, I, I think a lot of people think that, uh, well, before, before I get back to this, just let me get this out of the way, okay? I am 57.33 years old. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm probably, uh, well, I don't know, looking around, I'm not sure it's true. I was going to say, I'm probably the oldest person still making games. But, uh, but I'm certainly uh, one of the older people uh, and, and happy about it. But I've seen so much chaos in the last 35 years, you wouldn't believe it. Uh, and I know there, there are people uh, uh, who look back on history. I've lived through uh, a period where there were no video games. Half of my life was, was lived with no video games at all, uh, but with lots of wonderful dice. Um, and then for half of my life, video games were my life. Uh, and in that time, uh, you know, I think I've learned something uh, that I, I, hope, I hope I can pass along some knowledge to, uh, to some young developers. If there are any out there, it's really weird. Um, maybe they can't afford dice, I don't know. Um, but uh, anyhow, I hope there's some lessons here, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, but, but that lifetime of experience has, has really kind of shown me that, uh, you know, th this may seem like an especially chaotic time, uh, a uniquely tumultuous time in, in our, our medium and our business, but, uh, but really not so much. I mean, if, if you think back, I mean, uh, a lot of us here lived through the, the, the time when the end of arcades meant the end of games. When the end of Atari meant the end of games. When the PC supplanted the Apple II as the, the uh, sort of primary gaming platform, that was the end of games. When Myst was, remember when Myst was going to, going to take the place of every other kind of game? How are we going to compete? Remember when, when uh, MMOs were the one and only future of games? Uh, remember last week when, oh, no, wait, anyway. um, so, uh, how much trouble can I get in in 20 minutes? This is kind of fun. Uh, you know, I, look, we, a lot of us here are looking at it, all the gray beards in the audience. We've lived through this time when we went from, you remember when we had one color? <laughs> remember when we had to worry about K, you know, K's of RAM? Remember when there, you know, like beeps and boops were the best we could do and, and the rolling MT32 was the be all end? Anyway, uh, we've lived through a lot of changes and we're gonna live through whatever changes we're, we have to deal with now, I suspect. Uh, chaos is where we live as video game developers and if you can't deal with that, uh, go work in a, ba oh wait, don't go work in a bank anymore, that doesn't work either. Anyway, go work somewhere else. Um, so, uh, you know, we've lived through the, the transition from geek entertainment to mainstream, well, almost mainstream medium anyway. Uh, but there is something that's different, okay? We're different. Uh, gamers are different. Game developers are different. Uh, we are getting older, uh, as exemplified by this. By the way, I'll warn you right now, this is going to be an intensely personal confessional thing. I hope there's something relevant to you. Um, but here, here was a, a, I had a little wake-up moment last week 
uh, in the, the wake of events, as it were, uh, one of my programmers said, you've been doing this a long time. Why don't you just retire? You know, you, you've done it all. Just retire. Um, and the answer was easy. I mean, I still have stuff I want to make, okay? I'm not quite ready for, <laughs> to go, uh, you know, live on a farm or something. But, um, you know, the, it, was, it was kind of an eye-opening question. No one had ever asked me that before. And, and clearly, I'm closer to the, the end of a career than I am to the beginning of a career. I had breakfast this morning with a guy who's been in the game business for five months, and it was like, oh, man, I remember when I was you. Um, but uh, not ready to retire yet. Uh, and luckily, there are a lot more of us all the time. Uh, I was going to put pictures of lots of people I see in the audience here up here, but I decided I'd better just do myself. But there are a lot of us out there, uh, gamers and game developers. Um, now, look, if you're like I was 30, 35 years ago, you're going to ignore me, okay? But uh, one of the prerogatives of age is I get to say what I want anyway. So uh, uh, I hope there's something relevant, but if there isn't, I'm going to have fun anyway, okay? So here's where, where I, what I think uh, is the... Um, I'm finally ready to start, actually, my talk with 13 minutes to go. Um, what, what does it mean to have an aging player population? By the way, I need to apologize to David Cage, who gave half of my talk yesterday. Uh, if you're in the audience, please introduce yourself, because I agree with everything you said and disagree with every solution you proposed. Um, anyway, GDC, man. We've got to get up on a stage together. Uh, OK, aging players. Uh, when, when I was a young player, when I was a young gamer, um, my life was classes and what I laughingly call the social life, uh, basketball, movies, uh, and I could and did ditch all of those things to make time for games. Uh, as a young gamer, I needed 100 hours of gaming. I needed it. You know, I didn't have any money. I needed my games to last a really long time. I could ditch anything in my life and focus on games to the exclusion of everything else. Um, Teens and 20-somethings have that luxury. Uh, 20s and 30s and 40-somethings, not so much. All of a sudden, there, there's competition for your time in a way that there, there wasn't when, when you were younger, uh, at least for me. I got to the point where a 20-hour game, perfect. You know? I, could, I could get away from my wife for a little while. You know? I, could, uh, I could play for 20 hours. That was about it. Uh, at 50, oh my god. Uh, you know, uh, six hours, I'm done. Okay, um, seriously, uh, you know, you just don't have the time anymore. Uh, and I, I think you, you probably all of you kind of see that too. Um, but there's more than just, just time. It's not just about giving me shorter experiences. It's about, it's about the content. Content, my, my interests in content have changed dramatically. And I suspect this is true for many of you. There are some games that just should not be made, by the way. I try not to be too, too obnoxious, but um, well, when I was younger, that's all I needed. All I wanted was to differentiate myself from other people. Uh, it, you know, if, if it was going to convince my mother that I was going to turn into a juvenile delinquent, I was there. Uh, I, I needed to be transgressive. Uh, and, and, and adrenaline rush and spectacle were all I needed. And, you know, the thing is, I don't think I was alone in that. I, I, maybe I'm just shallow, but I, I know enough teenagers and 20-somethings to, to know that, that I'm not alone in this. Um, when you're this age, spectacle is plenty, and, and you know, blood sprays and all that stuff that, that we all know and love uh, is really kind of uh, what you're looking for, because you want to uh, alienate people in a, in a strange sort of way. Um, you want to shock people, uh, and you want to be different. Uh, not so much anymore. Um, I have no interest in, you know, guys who wear armor and swing big swords. Uh, I, I really just, you know, I, I, I've been the last space marine between the Earth and alien invasion already. Uh, you know, I, I really just don't need to go there anymore. Uh, I want content that is relevant to my life, that is relevant to me, that is set in the real world. It's, uh, again, I, David talked about this yesterday, and I think he was right on the money. Um, if we're going to reach a broader audience, we have to stop thinking about that audience strictly in terms of teenage boys or even, you know, teenage girls. We need to think about things that are relevant to normal humans, okay, uh, and not just the geeks we all used to be. Uh, these two games, uh, Heavy Rain and The Walking Dead, uh, were, were two of the best experiences I, I, I had as a gamer last year uh, and the year before. Um, 
it, it's, I'll, I'll come back to these in a second because interestingly enough, I, 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 if you asked my wife, I screamed at the screen the entire time I was playing both of these, uh, which is kind of the way I do. I, I, the more I scream, the more I like the game, by the way, so don't be insulted anybody. Um, but I just like, I would never make a game like this. How could I make a game like this? But as an experience, it was great. It really made me think. I'm going to come back to that. Uh, but they were, they were different in that they, they actually delivered uh, a satisfying experience in a fairly short time frame. I didn't have to play for 100 hours. But, but the really cool thing, the, the thing that just blew my mind about, the, about those two games was that they, they weren't just about, you know, uh, ideal Nordic bodybuilder heroes. Uh, and they weren't about like, big events. They, were, they celebrated the ordinary, the quotidian, the everyday. Uh, they made a dinner compelling. They made a hug compelling. Uh, they made playing with a kid compelling. Uh, they, they, they made you know, having a fight when you really aren't good enough <laughs> interesting and compelling. I mean, uh, when, when you can make everyday activities as compelling and as, as cool and as fun as a firefight, I think you've really accomplished something. Uh, and so they were, they were really kind of eye-opening games for me. Uh, and they've kind of changed the way I think. And, and here's the thing. Uh, like, obviously, these games are in my design wheelhouse, right? Uh, I, for, for 30 years, I've been making games about player empowerment and choice and consequence and, uh, uh, you know, play style matters. And, and, and I will go to my grave thinking that that is the best thing, the, the only important thing games can do. But even those games, even the games, they, they require high commitment. You need time. Uh, you need to master skills. Uh, you need Twitch skills, which I no longer have. I cannot compete with a 16-year-old. It's just not going to happen. And to be frank, I don't want to. Uh, so the trick for me personally, and, and I hope for, for many of you, is to find a way to combine the, um, the player empowerment, the, uh, the sort of systemic approach that, that we've always taken, or that I've always taken, in games like, like Deus Ex and Epic Mickey and all the others, uh, with the kind of everyday, compelling, relevant, uh, ordinary excitement of, of games like, uh, that are coming from, from David and, and from Telltale. Uh, so that's, that's kind of my take as, a, as an aging gamer. As an aging developer, I think, I think things change as well, and, and here, uh, uh, you know, I, 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 you know, when I was in my 20s and 30s, man, I mean, like, I, I would sleep under my desk, you know, all the time. Uh, you know, if, I had a rule that if anybody on my team was in the office, I was in the office, okay? Uh, when I was in my 40s, I don't, I don't know how many of you are in your 40s, but if you, if you haven't quite reached that yet, 40, 45, great time in your life. Oh, my God. No, it's, it's fantastic. It, it just trust me. Uh, you have all the experience of age and all the energy of youth. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's pretty remarkable, 40, 45, great time. Um, but uh, why is this not advancing? There we go. Uh, 50s, uh, things changed again, okay? I, you know, in my 40s, I started realizing maybe there's more to life than blasters, you know, and, and broadswords. Uh, and maybe I would actually like to have a life as opposed to sleeping at the office all the time. In my 50s, um, what I've discovered is that, you know, emotionally, actually, I'm in a really good place. Like, I don't give a damn if any of you like me, you know? I mean, it, it, that's a big change, right? Um, I, I, it's, it's, it's nice to be able to just go out and say, I'm going to do what I do uh, and have the confidence that, that you can actually do that. It's a pretty cool time. Uh, but physically, hmm, hmm, not quite so much. Uh, I, I'll, I'll warn you right now, those of you who are, are heading towards your 50s, uh, you, well, okay, I will just personalize it. I do not have the energy I used to have. Just, it's a fact. Uh, I cannot work the kind of hours I used to. I will die. Uh, and I am not ready to retire, let alone die. Uh, you discover that uh, you don't have time to waste. You don't have time. I mean, like, it, it, think about this. I've been working in this industry for 30 years, a little bit more than 30 years now. And my entire life is summed up in 21 things. 21, okay? Uh, how many more am I going to work on? Who knows? You know, five, ten, maybe, three? Uh, every single one of them better have a chance of doing something special. There is no time to waste on somebody needs to make some money, so I'm going to take this job. There's no time. Uh, you discover that no matter how much Pilates you do uh, or how much gym time you spend, you do not have... Uh, the time to make mistakes anymore. 
okay? Uh, you learned it to uh, value passion over, uh, over analytics, let's just say. Uh, you have to rely on others. Find a way to do this. You can't do it alone. You can't be the guy who says, make that pixel blue, not green, on every game you work on. Um, it is time to start helping other people accomplish their goals because, frankly, by your 50s, you better have accomplished many of your own, <laughs> okay? Uh, it's time to give back a little bit. Uh, the other thing that I've discovered, uh, and, and here, this is, I'll come back to Heavy Rain and Walking Dead, um, the power and perils of ideology. I mean, I have spent 30 years championing a very specific kind of game at the expense of a variety of other kinds of games. Uh, and I have worked very hard, you have to work very hard, not to just do what you do because it's what you do. Uh, you need to be learning constantly. Uh, keep that, that mind open. Oh my God, I have four minutes left. Um, okay, so where does this leave us? Let's, let, me, let me start summing up. Uh, you know, I, I think when you, when you get to be an older developer, it's time to be sharing more uh, and it, maybe not, not making quite as much, but sharing more. Uh, I think I, I'm a guy who understands an audience that uh, maybe some, some younger folks uh, don't understand. I see the value in that audience. I know how to reach that audience. Uh, I, I think I, I understand as a guy who is not targeted particularly by our industry, uh, my, my demographic is not highly desired. Uh, I think I understand how much more diverse the audience is if we would just go looking for that more diverse audience. Uh, I, I have a pretty keen understanding that games are not just for kids. I haven't stopped gaming. I don't intend to stop gaming ever, you know. Uh, there was one of my best friends, uh, I, I knew his son when, when his son was in the womb, and now his son is a senior designer uh, at a game company I will not name. Uh, but uh, games are not just for kids. Gamers and game developers are everywhere. Uh, I hope I've given you some food for thought. I really am ripping now. Uh, if nothing else, uh, I hope you will not follow my path, but you will put aside those geekish things uh, at, a, at an earlier age than I did and, and, and really discover that, that you don't have as much time as you think uh, and that you better be passionate about what you do, although I, I don't know that you have to follow the path of Lauren Kate in the passion novels or fallen novels. Um, Aging is mostly good. I mean, I'm not crazy about the wrinkles or the frequent trips to the men's room, uh, but, uh, but mostly it's, it, it's, a, it's a good journey. You're, on a, you're on, a good, on a good journey. It's better than the alternative, that's for sure. Uh, and I've been lucky enough to be the kid gamer who just plays, you know, because it's, it's fun, doesn't think about it too much. I've been the 20-something know-it-all who thinks he should be in charge and is completely wrong. Uh, I, I've been the 30-something who's, you know, there's got to be more to life than, than working seven days a week, 20 hours a day. Uh, I've been the 40-something guy who, you know, really has the wherewithal to do whatever the hell he wants, which is great. Uh, I've been the 50-something who would rather spend time with his wife than spend time at the office uh, it, when his wife isn't playing World of Warcraft obsessively. Um, uh, and, and I've discovered the importance of these words. I mean, and, and again, it sounds crazy, and this is not just, I think, strictly personal. Um, I, I think more about the word legacy than I probably should. I wanna leave something behind, and I think that's probably true for most people who, who get to the point where they've been doing something for 30 years. I hope, actually, all of the 20-something and 30-something folks in the audience will think about that. Think what you're leaving behind. This is not just about making money. I, I used to be embarrassed to say that we create art, but I am no longer embarrassed to say that. You're leaving something behind. You are creating something new and different that the world has never seen. Think about your legacy. You know, what are you leaving behind? Think about what you, can, what you can do to help other people accomplish their goals. And forget about Metacritic, okay? Just don't care. Uh, and then there's, I mean, I'm, I'm two and a half years away. Holy cow, what are 60-somethings gonna bring? I cannot wait to see that. Uh, it's going to be a remarkable time. And I hope I'm here 30 years from now at DICE in 2043, you know, hopping around on my bionic legs and listening to some of you with my nano-augmented ears. Uh, can you imagine the chaos that we'll describe 30 years from now? Holy cow, I, I can't, and I can't wait to get there. So uh, just to, to sum up, uh, I really am out of work. Um, I, I know you're not supposed to do this at a talk like this, but um, that is my, my temporary work email. Uh, if I am available for, uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> so uh, thanks, I guess you kids are okay and we'll let you play in the yard. Thanks very much.